audit, uh, on audit, uh, of the Fiscal Affairs Committee to order. We have a very really, uh, simple agenda. Uh, the first thing uh, is to approve the minutes of the December 18, 2012 meeting. Moving. Second. Uh, and all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, thank you. It's considered passed. The next uh, item uh, are information items, and I will turn it over uh, to our auditors from KCMG. We have with us today, uh, as always, Michelle Massey and John Usanio. Thank you. Shelley, please. All right, so I have a presentation that I uh, passed around this afternoon. So we'll just turn to page one, and we have two agenda items for this afternoon. The first is to review with you the management letter. And the second agenda item is to review with you the A133 audit. So I believe both of those were provided in your materials. And I just wanted to note one thing before I turn it over to John, that with respect to the A133, I don't know if you had a chance to review, it's a very thick, voluminous document, but page 72 is the most important page of that report. And it does say that there are, uh, are no audit findings, no A133 findings this year. So that is a tremendous accomplishment. Um, and the first time I think that that's been the case since I've been a part of this audit, so that's great. Well, in the future, if you could put something like that on page one, you might see. Well, okay, you're right. <laughs> 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 I myself, no findings. <laughs> <laughs> have to read another <laughs> they keep me guessing, you know, all the way through the report. <laughs> like a good mystery, the answer comes at the end. <laughs> okay, um, I'm going to turn it over to John to uh, take you through a, a little bit about the management letter. So as part of our annual audit, uh, we visit uh, the university controller's office, and we also visit uh, eight schools, eight colleges. Uh, this year, we visited uh, Baruch. We outlined them here, Manhattan Community College, Bronx, CUNY Law, uh, Hunter College, Medgar's Queens, and York College. Um, we cycle the colleges on a, uh, every three years, so we ensure that we cover each of the colleges on a, on a respective basis uh, every three years. Um, the management letter, uh, we'll, once we're out there on the next slide, we're, we're focusing in on certain areas and processes at each of the individual colleges that we visit. Uh, the ones that we typically pay attention to would be tuition management, where we look at the registration and billing processes. We look at tu uh, tuition and fees along with financial aid for each of the individual student accounts. We also look at cash management. Those, um, those processes involve your reconciliations for your banking, banking and cash collection procedures. We look at procurement and, and property management. In these cycles, we'll look at capital and non-capital items, the procurement process, the distribution of, ca of cash disbursements, as well as any tagging and disposal procedures that may occur at each of these individual colleges. Uh, information technology continues to grow. Uh, I'm sh as you're aware, it's m gaining more and more focus. We look at access controls and program controls at each of the colleges. We see how they interface along with the central office. And then finally, we look at human resources. In the human resource section, we'll look at approvals for new hires and terminations, as well as the recording of any payroll or any uh, related benefits that could be associated and how that rolls up into the individual central office. Uh, those are some of the procedures that we perform. There are others that we do, but these are the five categories for the most part that we do focus in on. As a result of those, um, I'll turn it over to Shelley for the comments that we might have. Okay. So John just discussed um, all of the different processes and areas that we focus on when we're out at the schools. So we also do um, look at certain areas when we are out at um, central office. And there was one comment that I, I wanted to bring to your attention that related to the College of Staten Island and the entering of transactions into um, the financial reporting system um, that CUNY uses to prepare its financial statements. So there was a transaction that had occurred late in the year that uh, the College of Staten Island did not include in their reporting package. Um, and it was caught and detected by central office management upon reviewing their draft financial statements. So this was recorded. They recorded post-closing entries to record the transaction, so it was included in the financial statements. Um, but we did have some recommendations um, for the College of Staten Island to um, focus on the accuracy and the timeliness of their uh, financial reporting processes and their procedures. And also for central management, we have had this comment in the past where we have been recommending 
that they ask the colleges to input <coughs> data on a more frequent basis so that they could be reviewing it on a more frequent basis and then it wouldn't be something that was caught you know, right at the end. Any questions on, on that? I have, I have one question. Sure. We, uh, I know that in, in some situations, uh, we have had the issue come up regarding the lack of a complete disaster recovery plan in many cases. And it's continually noted that um, by you that this is something that needs to happen. It's continually responded to uh, that uh, it, they're going to be reviewing it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm just wondering, uh, at, is there a more, uh, if, and I haven't, I, and I just, and I saw it here in a number of cases, mm -hmm. I didn't see every case, but I, I just remember it coming up. I mean, what, what is the forward action when an item continually comes up like this where people are, you're noting that uh, mm -hmm. it should be taken care of, individuals are saying that they're on top of it, but that's not the case. It seems that it ought to go through a threshold of certain actions that shows progress towards a goal. And, and I think that is the case. Um, I think we are seeing that there are actions being taken. Okay. Um, it's, it is one of those comments that has been lingering because the response of management is that as the schools are all getting up on PeopleSoft and CUNY first, that they will then be covered by the disaster recovery plan that's encompassing CUNY first. Okay. So I, I do see progress. It is something that not all the schools are, are up and running on and um, we do anticipate that it be fully implemented, you know, as the CUNY first implementation is complete. Okay. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. It's just something, I mean, <clears throat> sometimes, and, and having been involved in disaster <coughs> recovery efforts in, in previous uh, incarnations, uh, sometimes individuals don't pay attention to it until it's necessary in the last minute. We just don't want to have that right. happening to us. That, that's all. And I so agree. I, I would just hope that uh, if, if we are waiting for the CUNY first uh, e execution and if that will resolve all of our problems, um, then fine. But, but if it's not, then we just need to be more proactive mm -hmm. in, in, in having a follow a series of actions that follow up uh, in a more uh, expedited manner, mm -hmm. it would seem to me. Yeah, I agree. Okay. okay. So. Um, I'll take the next slide. We're skipping, we're skipping this slide. Okay. okay. So that uh, covers us for the management letter. And then moving on to slide five, um, just briefly, I wanted to touch upon the A133 audit. So we, we did issue the A133 audit um, on March 21st. And the A133 audit, there are three primary objectives um, for this audit. In the, the booklet that we have issued, there are three audit opinions. The third opinion, which starts on page 69, is the important opinion that covers us for the A133 audit. And that opinion has three sections. Um, first, um, we have a responsibility to determine whether the schedule of expenditures of federal awards is presented fairly in um, respects in relation to CUNY's financial statements. And what that means is we have a responsibility to determine that the schedule of federal awards is a complete schedule, that anything that the university had received from federal sources is included on that schedule of federal awards. And we do reconcile that schedule to the audited financial statements. And that is a very important process because what's on that schedule determines our major programs and what we actually audit. And, and John will be covering that in a little bit. The next two areas are we have a responsibility to obtain an understanding of the internal control over compliance that CUNY has for each of its major programs. So there is a section in that opinion that does walk through our understanding of the internal controls and whether or not there was anything that was deemed to be a significant deficiency or material weakness. So there were none. Um, so it does state that there are no material weaknesses, but if we did have a finding that resulted from a, a weakness in internal control, that would be identified in that section of the opinion. And the last section of the opinion and the third objective is to determine whether CUNY complied with the laws, regulations, and the provisions of contracts as it relates to its uh, major federal programs. And that, um, for the purpose of, of our audit, is to determine whether or not there is material noncompliance associated with the Student Financial Assistance Program and the Federal Disaster Program that we audited. And again, there were no findings, so there was nothing to report there. But if we did have a finding, it would reference uh, the schedule of findings uh, where that uh, would be noted. 
So I'm going to turn it over to John, who's just going to walk us through um, the determination of major programs and what we actually did to audit. Can I just ask mm -hmm. a, a fundamental question? Federal awards is a very large mm -hmm. umbrella of activities. One of the components in that holding of federal awards are grants that come in from mission agencies, National Science Foundation, mm -hmm. Department of Defense, and we are a serious player in that. Mm -hmm. Now, that those are audited by a separate um, uh, firm, uh, I, I imagine, because this is the Research Foundation, yes. which we have an iron mm -hmm. curtain uh, religiously between what we do at the university and what we do at the Research Foundation. I know you roll up the, uh, the audit that yeah. is done at the Research Foundation mm -hmm. into your financial statements for the university, but how did, do you just sign off on it uh, as, and, and you're okay with doing that? That's a, that's a really good question. So yes, your, your schedule of federal awards does not include what the Research Foundation has. There is actually a, an opi there's a paragraph in the opinion, that third opinion that I was talking about that actually does say there is a separate audit done for your research foundation, and any findings associated with that are not included in your report. Okay. So we actually do um, spell that out and okay. let the reader know that there is another report that is issued, um, but the findings, that there, if there are any, are not included in this report. So you, you, you do not comment on this Do not do anything, right. Right. Okay. The, uh, yeah. We have um, the ability to separate that out okay. for A133 purposes. One, one other question. Perhaps John will be covering it in his overview. But you mentioned that disaster aid is included as major federal programs. Uh, I seem to recall some dialogue in a prior meeting that there was a problem with the way we were, was it the way we were recording it, or was there an issue with, with disaster aid in any of the colleges? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, no. Okay. Just from the timing to get all the documents they needed in order to audit it. Okay. So, so the next slide is just an overview of how we determine major programs. And, you know, as Shelley mentioned, your <coughs> schedule of expenditures of federal awards is, is one of the key drivers there because it is, for in essence, a, a mathematical computation and based on the summation of what we have by each program at certain dollar levels or, or thresholds, as they call them, uh, does determine major programs. So, for example, if you had anything above 300,000 or 3% 3 of total expenditures, that would trigger an evaluation of whether those programs are high risk or low risk in order to be considered a major program. Now, given that, you're a co uh, that this is a college and there's loan programs with direct loans and Perkins and, and the likes, the loan factor and loan guarantees need to be computed into your computation for your threshold. All of this information, by the way, is also included in the report on page 72, and it does discuss what your dollar threshold is, it does discuss <clears throat> what your major programs are and that information. But again, the risk assessments that go into once you identify a major program are, are to be considered whether you're high risk, which would make it a major program that we as auditors would be required to test, or if you're low risk, depending on certain circumstances. Now, to be considered low risk, the program could, must have been audited in at least one of the two cycles uh, or the two periods previously. No findings should have been noted. There's no requirement that an agency would like you or, or would deem this to be high risk and therefore needed to be audited. And then this concept of this recovery money or this ARA as they call it has been around. It's starting to die down at this point. The funding level from ARA and recovery has diminished. Uh, there were certain, or certain criteria or exemptions that they had in the past that could be considered. Again, in the interest of time, it's really, you know, to, to get into that detail is really not relevant at this point. Um, and then once you meet those criteria, then you start getting into auditor judgment as to whether the program uh, is the complexity of the program, the, the, the uh, maintenance of controls over the program, and the likes to determine high risk or low risk. Uh, if a program is determined to be high risk, we will audit it. It's as simple as that. If it is low risk, uh, what we do is we desert, determine if there's anything below those numbers, or as they call them, level Bs or type B programs, uh, and assess whether there needs to be a replacement for the two. Again, uh, here we had two major programs, as the next slide will say. 
uh, we had a, um, we audited SFA as we do every year. And the reason we audit SFA primarily is because it is your major, biggest program. And it does give us the coverage that we need in order for us to uh, provide an opinion on your A133. In addition, this year, we also audited the disaster recovery program. Uh, those, those dollars uh, exceeded 600,000. Your dollar threshold was 300,000 this year. As such, when we went through the criteria, it was determined that it hadn't been audited in the past and was required to be audited this year. Um, of, of note is that we do visit all the CUNY schools when we do the A133. It is different than when we cycle through for the management letter comments and processes. Excuse so me, would you mind speaking into the microphone? Oh, sure, so I'm so sorry about that. Live. Sure. Thank you very much. That better? So of interest, we do actually uh, look at all the CUNY schools. It is uh, something that uh, for the A133 program that we do participate in. We don't cycle those as we do with the management letter comments. So. Um, on the next slide, just to give you an overview of what we do focus in on for uh, SFA or student, or student financial aid, we look at the criteria such as allowability. We'll look to see if the students, if the awards and payments were made to the student. We'll look at cash management, uh, the drawdown of funding uh, to ensure that the, that's being done properly. We look at eligibility. There are a list of criteria uh, that for your students need to be met in order for us to determine if they're eligible to participate in your financial aid program. Uh, period of availability, sounds simple enough, but the, that the awards are expended in the period in which you're actually auditing or, or uh, cycling is something that we will look at to ensure that proper cutoff does exist. We'll look at reporting. There are certain reports that are required to be submitted timely and um, uh, based on, on whether it's recovery money or other types of aid. And then there's a whole host of special tests for SFA that need to be considered. Uh, some of the bigger ones, the return of Title IV. If, if you have any changes in student status changes or enrollment reporting, uh, federal work studies to ensure that you have work, uh, work study agreements in place and that, that those are being properly maintained and authorized. You have disbursements of funding and verification. The government requires certain verifications to be performed on certain student data. Uh, we look at those and, and ensure that the school has followed its processes to ensure that the verification process has been provided. So as you can see, there, there's, a, there's a lot of things that go into just your SFA uh, information, and that is reviewed for each school. In addition to that, in the next slide for this year, we had to review the disaster recovery, uh, disaster grants for public assistance. Now this was your, your basically your, your FEMA money, the federal emergency money that was passed through. Uh, we looked, there are four, uh, five criteria that were required to be looked at. Uh, we looked at allowable costs and, and uh, activities to ensure that what you submitted for reimbursement was appropriate and at the correct dollar limits. We looked at cash management to ensure that once you, requ once you requested the submission and the approval of the vouchers that you were actually received payment and that those were appropriate. We looked at procurement and suspension, again, ensuring that you worked with the appropriate vendors and that there no one that was debarred from the program. Uh, for which you are seeking reimbursement from the government. <clears throat> we also looked at reporting. There are certain reporting and special tests that are required to be formatted, primarily with the submission of the vouchers and the request for reimbursement, uh, ensuring that they were approved by uh, management and submitted within a timely fashion is something that we focus in on as well. I just want to emphasize that. I just want to point out this, this is related to Hurricane Irene, Irene. Irene right. which took place in August 2011. Mm -hmm. Superstorm Sandy is not part of this audit, but that'll be next year. Possibly next year, right. Mm -hmm. Right. And so that really brings us to our next slide, um, which focus is our audit results. And again, as Shelley mentioned earlier, with our objectives, we, we did complete our audit. Um, it, we had no findings. I think the last bullet really summarizes the, uh, <laughs> the A133. It was a, it was a good year, great year, actually. Uh, we conducted our, our audits in accordance with GAS and, and OMB standards, and we're happy to report that there were no findings at this point. And I'd be happy to take any questions, or Shelley. No, I'm, I'm happy that there, there are no findings. I just wonder whether there are uh, any issues that fall short of findings that we need to be aware of in terms of correcting at any one of our campuses. Well, 
Through the process of our audit, um, we made a, a sample of about 170 students. So, you know, you have a, a lot more than 170 students, but the federal regulations state that um, based on certain risk criteria, we would make a sample of either 25, 40, or 60. So we are well above um, the requirement, but we are auditing for material noncompliance. So something that would be material to your student financial assistance program. So there may be, you know, smaller noncompliance issues out there that we are not finding because it's not an objective of our audit. Um, but if anything were to come up during the process of our audit that wouldn't meet a finding level, we would be discussing that with management. So there was nothing in the course of our audit that we needed to, to bring to their attention. You would, you would put that in the management Yes, and that would be put into the management letter, yes. say on behalf of the trustees on the serve on the subcommittee of audit uh, with the chancellor here uh, the financial team this no findings was not an accident it is the result of diligent hard work and application and a great deal of acumen and on behalf of the trustees who serve on this committee I want to thank if Mark were here I'd start with Mark Shaw but Matt you, you it falls upon you <laughs> to get receive the thanks as well as uh, the acting university controller, uh, Miriam Katowitz. Uh, you are not the heir of a great system. You were one of the architects that was there uh, with Barry Kaufman, and we thank you for setting this up and making, making things work the way they work. And that also goes, uh, Thomas, I know you've been here and, and been throughout this entire process. It's, uh, I don't know how rare it is for major university systems to have an audit that is this clean. I have to believe it is not the norm, but it's probably the exception. And it's an exception for a reason, Chancellor, that uh, the team in place uh, is now certified or verified to have done exactly what we thought they were doing, which is an outstanding job. So thank you for that. And a lot of the credit has to go in to the, the school. I'm sorry. I, a lot of the credit goes to the schools because they do the detail work. We work with them to make sure they understand the overlay and the requirements, but they actually do all the processing and the pieces. So we keep telling them what a good job they've been doing as well. So. And we would certainly second that. <laughs> yeah, de <laughs> definitely. Um, we, we feel that, I mean, just to underscore what Trustee Cantaleo is stating, uh, you know, the reason for my questioning is just to dig a little deeper, you know, and, um, and you rise to the standard at all times. So we really appreciate that and, and appreciate the work of all of the individuals who are involved. It doesn't happen without a good team at a number of different levels being involved in it. There's no way that it's just one group or another. So. We want to thank you for that effort. And before I end the meeting, obviously, to KPMG as well, we very much appreciate your, your services. And with that, if there's no other business, uh, the subcommittee on audit is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.